Welcome to Nita's Excerpts from the Experts, seven-minute learning sessions with researchers and practitioners in the field of eating disorders and families and individuals who share their experiences and perspectives. I'm your host, Sarah Bowie-Keaton. This week, our guest is Dr. Amy Baker-Dennis. She's a clinical psychologist with over 45 years of practice. She specializes in the treatment of eating disorders, mood and anxiety disorders, personality disorders, and trauma. This week, Amy will be speaking to us about eating disorders and substance abuse. Amy, welcome to our show. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. So how common is it for someone to have uh, an eating disorder and a substance abuse disorder? Approximately 50% of our patients are either um, abusing legal or illegal substances. It ranges from diet pills, to laxatives, to diuretics, um, Adderall, alcohol, um, cannabis, some abuse opiates. So it's the full range of substance abuse. The biggest ones are caffeine abuse and tobacco. Um, what should treatment look like for an individual who has a dual diagnosis with eating disorders and substance abuse? Well, one of my passions for the last couple of decades has been trying to work with substance abuse facilities and with eating disorder facilities to try to get them all on the same page. Uh, one of my partners that I work with, Dr. Tamara Pryor and I, have done some surveys of eating disorder programs to see if they offer integrated substance abuse treatment when their patients come in. There was also a huge study done by the National Institute of Substance Abuse looking at what kinds of eating disorder treatments are available within private and publicly funded uh, substance abuse programs. And they found that many of the programs don't even screen for an eating disorder upon intake. And those that did and said that they actually treated simultaneously the eating disorder were only providing abstinence-based 12-step approach. So they weren't providing any evidence-based interventions for people with eating disorders. We want patients to be able to go to one place and get good integrated treatment. And that requires that you have people on your staff that are trained to treat both substance abuse disorders and no evidence-based interventions for eating disorders. In many ways, the treatment is similar, but there are some very significant differences in the treatment of these two disorders. So if you want to seek treatment in this field, um, and find a program that treats both disorders in an integrated way, you can't just read the website that says, oh yes, we treat substance abuse and eating disorders. You need to call and find out if they actually treat the substance abuse that your loved one um, is engaging in. Many of them will not take somebody who is an alcoholic or take someone who is addicted to opiates. They'll take diet pills. They may take a cannabis use disorder. They may take laxatives and diuretics, but when you're looking at the more serious addictions, they're not gonna touch them, but a few programs do. So I would encourage consumers to pick up the phone and actually talk to somebody about what their treatment approach is to the dual diagnosed patient. What, what takeaway would you give to individuals and families who are looking for treatment for, for both eating disorders and substance abuse? First of all, look for an integrated program. I mean, it improves treatment delivery when you have staff members that are trained to address both issues simultaneously. It improves the continuity of care. It's um, in the programs that do have an integrated treatment approach, they work with outpatient providers, PC, uh, PHP, IOP, and residential 
they have a whole system of care that under, understands the integration process. Um, it reduces the time in treatment. You're not bouncing back and forth between substance abuse program where you may come out sober, but while you're in treatment for your alcohol use disorder, your eating disorder comes to the surface. And the opposite way, you go into an eating disorder program that doesn't address substance abuse. The eating disorder may improve dramatically, but the substance use disorder may go up. It's kind of like, you know, whack-a-mole. And you want to address both simultaneously. Hopefully, if both order uh, disorders are addressed, the patient becomes fully aware of their compensatory behaviors and understands what they need to do to create a good toolkit of coping strategies that do not include the abuse of food or the abuse of substances. It reduces consumer confusion. I mean, really and truly, I get calls from professionals all the time. I've got this patient with both disorders, where do I send them that need a higher level of care? Or families will come to me and say, my daughter does this and this, where do I send them? It's very confusing. and. Unfortunately, the medical system, the PHPs, the pediatricians, whatever, are not aware of what to do. So I get calls from them as well. And I think what it does is it creates a climate of no wrong door in our eating disorder treatment system. Meaning my fantasy is that we can construct a delivery system in the eating disorder field at an inpatient, residential, partial, and outpatient level where we have integrated services for these patients at every level. Dr. Dennis, that was really informative information for families and I really appreciate your time. Thank you for being with us this week on the program. Thank you very much. Nita's mission is to support individuals and families affected by eating disorders and serve as a catalyst for prevention, cures and access to quality care. NIDA offers programs and services designed to help you find the help and support you need. Whether you have been personally affected by an eating disorder or care about someone who has, recovery is possible and we're here to support you.